All right, welcome to Witch Police Radio. Here I am on the internet, uh, which is where I always am and where everyone always is because we're stuck in a pandemic. But uh, the guest on this episode is a member of a band that is seems to be taking advantage of the pandemic and in the sense of uh, releasing a new record. And from what I can tell, uh, well, first of all, before we even get into this, let's just introduce you. So if you want to you know, introduce yourself, give a bit of background about what you do in the group, and we can take it from there because I have a lot of questions about uh, everything the band's up to. Sure. Uh, my name is David Schellenberg. I play guitar and yell in a noisy hardcore band called Tunic. Uh, there's three of us. Dan Unger plays drums and Rory Alice plays bass. Cool. And so, yeah, what I was thinking is, that, you know, I've been, I've been throughout the pandemic, I've been talking to a lot of people. I've been doing these twice a week and I'm talking to artists from all over the spectrum of musical genres and uh, and different levels of success within their careers and things like that. And it seems like for a lot of people, there's been uh, just just I mean, everyone's struggling right now because of the situation the world is in, but it seems like your band, better than some others, seems to be handling the pandemic in the sense of your marketing is excellent. Oh, thank you. <laughs> the record that you're putting out. I mean, even before, you know, I've seen so many, so many, you know, ads for it, social media posts for it, and it, it definitely, I mean, so to make this a question, I guess it's like, what was your plan then? I mean, knowing that you have a record that's coming out uh, during this really uncertain time for everyone in the world, what was the sort of uh, idea behind making something that people will actually gravitate towards and then be able to grab onto? Sure, yeah, that's a great question. Um, we really, uh, sort of, a, we, uh, we hired a digital marketer to work uh, the First, uh, actually, to work the nylon single back okay. in September of 2019, and I was really uh, amazed with the results. And uh, I co- sort of got like got the feeling that it was going to be the future of musical publicity. And so when I really dragged my heels about trying to put, I pushed back this release and I pushed back another release. Like we still have something else coming out. Yeah, I just was like, we're not doing anything in 2020, and then everything you know it's just like we're still here so it's like okay let's let's bite the bullet but if we're gonna do it let's dump all this money to digital advertising because okay. we can't hit the road anymore so like i just i sort of like mapped it all out uh before we like before we even like decided that we were gonna put out the record i was like okay knowing that i we can't go play 100 shows this year what can we do to sort of create some sort of interest so it's like we have mm-hmm. to shoot these videos we have to shoot these live videos, like just everything. So I really, I just, I, I made sure that we got like GIF images, like, you know, for the Instagram and we had all these videos and all this great content. I got every band member who's ever been in and out of the band to send me every photo they've ever had from a tour. So I have like everything to post on social media because I, I don't have a show post or a live video or something yeah. to post every day, like when we're on tour. So I just sort of like, made sure that we had content so that we would always sort of be there in your feed. Well, it's, it's worked. I mean, at least in my, in my, my uh, opinion anyway, cause I I've been seeing a lot of it and it definitely, I signed up for your newsletter. I don't really sign up for newsletters yeah. that often, but I mean, it worked, right? So, I mean, that's a, maybe another interesting thing you've done uh, as far as, you know, getting music out during this time is, is that, that, that unreleased stuff that came out specifically for newsletter uh, signees, I guess. What was the uh, idea behind that? I mean, I, I think, again, it's a, it's a really clever marketing idea. Thanks. Yeah, I should also mention that I went back to school for marketing uh, in September because uh, as, I don't know if you know this, Sam, but like I booked shows for a living for the last like okay. decade of my life. And so I was just like, what part of booking shows do I really like? I actually really like selling the tickets and getting people to, to enjoy music. And I was like, well, if I have this downtime, I might as well go back to school for something. So I, sure. so I took a bunch of marketing classes. And so the idea behind uh, giving that stuff away on the mailing list is that uh, we've made this, uh, the Disappointment EP, which is really our first formal release from 2016, was originally supposed to be a full length album. Okay. And uh, we sat on it for too long and we only really liked four of the songs that were left on it. And then, so we scrapped I guess seven songs or something like that. And then I revisited them this fall and I was like, no, these songs are actually pretty good. And it's like, it's been long enough time spent away from them where I was like, you know, sort of when you're like, when you make something yourself and you don't like it, but other people tell you it's good, you don't believe yeah. them. And so after that, I revisited those songs. I was like, no, what? Let's, it's, it's time. Let's give them away. Like, let's, and I was like, that's a cool way of giving them away. And I was like, oh, we can attach it to, if we can do a newsletter thing. And yeah. Just sort of, and the newsletter is just really a way for me to try and have like one-on-one conversations with people. 
since we can't do that right now, really. So sure. Can... Well, what has the reception been? Because I mean, I think that like, have you maybe almost reconsidered the idea of doing it that way? Because I, I assume you've got positive response because it does sound really good. And Thank it's you, almost yeah. seems like, you know, maybe this should have been an actual album. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, there is a there is a couple of people who have uh, offered to put it out. They're okay. like, could I press it on tape? Can I do it on vinyl? And I'm just all like, like maybe not right now, but it's like cool to do later on. It's yeah. just funny. I never thought like in 2021 that we would put out every single song we've ever recorded and, you know, the existence of the band but it's, yeah it's been a really great response and it's been really cool to like have email conversations with people back and forth i just sort of this year i sort of just decided that like this idea of bands being like holier than thou and being like mysterious and cool i sort of just like got over it and i was like let's let's just hang out like yeah i'm just the person let's just you know email me email me i'll e email you back tell me about your songs or your pets or whatever you know like yeah well, and I don't want to spend too much time dwelling on, on, on the marketing aspect of things because, uh, you know, it, it is a big part of, of being in a band at this point, uh, especially during really? the pandemic. But I mean, it's, you know, it's not the most exciting uh, subject to talk about on a podcast. Well, I, could, I could do it all, all day, but yeah, please, whatever you prefer. So the, the, the album that's, that's uh, coming out in early April, which will be out by the time this, this uh, comes out mm -hmm. as a podcast, that's a compilation of uh, your previous releases plus some new songs, right? Yes. So... I guess, was that just to make it more available? Like, are these songs that are now out of print? I have one of your old seven inches and I assume okay. it's uh, it's probably not available yeah. uh, anymore, right? Is that kind of the, the idea behind this? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that and so, yeah, everything was out, was sold out. And actually our debut record, which came out in 2019, Complexion, is also sold out, but also the record label who put that out fell apart right after they released it. Oh, wow. Okay. There's a big, long, dramatic story about the guy who owned it. Like, his all of his checks started bouncing to the employees of the label. And so, like, the guys who worked for the label who signed us were like, hey, we don't work here anymore. And we're just like, oh, man. Like, we were on the road for the record. And I was like... That sucks. And I was like, this is uncomfortable. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, <laughs> and um, but then the, rec the record label kept selling records, like, on their band camp and stuff, and then not sending them. Oh, wow. Okay. So, okay. So I had people hitting me up like three or four months later being like, Hey, I bought this record from your label and I haven't heard from them and they haven't sent anything. And I'm all like, it's like, Oh crap. So then I would like, I sold my personal copy that yeah. I have. Like I don't have one <laughs> because I, I like, you know, so I just, so really uh, this uh, compilation is just a way to take that record out of that record label's hands and put it into artifacts hands who are okay. the new label who is like, who are awesome. And it's just like one of those things, like we didn't have a contract with that old label, that old, like that record sort of, kind of, it all sort of fell apart right when we were hitting the road. And then, uh, so it's just sort of a way to put everything together and just, and it, the fact that it all fits on the 112 inch was also just perfect, so. Yeah, it's what, like 26 songs or something like that? 23, yeah. 23, yeah, it's, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Before <laughs> I realized it was a compilation, I, I looked at the track list, I was like, that's a lot of songs for to fit on, to fit on a 12 inch for sure, yeah. Yeah, that's pretty funny. I, I guess like, have you listened back to the whole thing now? I mean, I'm assuming you have, but how does it feel to hear the new stuff kind of juxtaposed with the the earlier recordings? Do you feel like um, it all fits together, you know, if you're listening from start to finish or are there very separate eras of the band that are, that are obvious uh, to you listening back? Yeah, to me, absolutely. Um... I sort of this is my this is my fourth interview today so I've had I've, I've, I've uh, you might have to think about this right yeah so yeah. I, it's, I've been able to like look back at every time I listen to a song I like envision where we were in the band so like when I hear that stuff from disappointment like I think about how we used to practice like Rory and I were roommates at the time you know we Rory wasn't married we all smoked like you right. know we would pick Sam up from work at midnight and we would go practice from like midnight till 2 a.m. You know, like that's when we wrote those songs. That's so when I hear those songs, that's what I think about. And like, and sort of like, you know, when I think about the songs from Complexion, I think about how we brought Jace from Besnard Lakes here to record that record. And, you know, so it's just like, I hear it. I don't think that the average person would, would really hear it. But for me, since it's, since it's like really my, my life work. Yeah, um, yeah. Well, I think I read in another interview somewhere that um, that all I, I think this was you who said this that everything you write is something related to your own personal experiences. Yes. So, do you get any kind of like you know weird nostalgia vibes listening back to some of those things because uh -huh, they are yeah. focusing on specific you know time and place things for you? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, I uh, 
I had a, a I think someone someone I think Sheldon Burney wrote in a stylist thing that I that most of my songs are about uh, uh, strings of un uh, of unsuccessful relationships okay. as, as one has when they're twenty two of course yeah whenever I was writing these songs not the near thirty year old I am now so it uh, <laughs> so. I'm like, oh yeah, right. That I was upset about this thing that I'm not mad about anymore. Like every time I, you know, revisit the record, and then it's like some of the stuff, like the newer stuff, still sort of hits. Like, and even like a song like Exhaling, which is just about like spitting venom on tour and everyone on in the van just like being fed up with each other. Like I was like, God, I miss that. I would love to be mad at everybody in the van right now. Like versus the alternative of just being stuck at home, right? Yeah. Yeah. Do you think sonically there's a, an obvious progression, you know, from, from the very early stuff? I, I, I assume you do, because, I mean, that's what every band wants to be able to continually improve and grow. But, I mean, is it noticeable to the listener that that, that uh, this amount of time has passed from the first recordings that are on that compilation to the, the, the new stuff that's um, been recorded for this? I don't know. That's a good question. I think that the tuna formula is pretty evident, um, especially on, on exhaling as a whole. But if we go to the... Uh, the mailing list stuff, the Tunnel Vision yeah. Eyes EP, it, it has more of a more like uh, mundane and grotesque vibe to it, a little more slower and stuff like that. So I think I think we sort of did a good job of sort of splicing it up. But I think that like Tunic writes fast, yelly, two minute long songs. <laughs> it's sure. like that's what you're gonna get for 23 songs in a row. Like sure. you know, so well, grotesque is an interesting uh, way to describe music well what do you mean by grotesque like what about your sound is grotesque because i've never oh, heard anyone describe their own music that way before oh i usually tell people that our band is terrible um, okay, well, I, I mean I, I did that with my best <laughs> too but mine actually were terrible but yeah it's uh <laughs> that's why i'm doing this <laughs> uh grotesque I, yeah i just think like it's um it just didn't sound good like it sounds good but it sounds bad at the same time like it's right. just it's not to say that like we sound like um like scab smoker or like we're doomy or like you know like like something like that but it's, but it's uh, abrasive right yeah it's abrasive and it's heavy and it's just sort of like it, it leaves a feeling of uh being uncomfortable so that's that's kind of always been the goal and it, and we sort of accomplished it in these like sort of like slow churning uh tunes okay does that uh, feeling of, of discomfort does that happen more on the slower stuff than it does on maybe you know something that says really really quick and, and punkier i guess maybe yeah i guess so i haven't really thought about that too much uh because you do have some of those in your catalog you have those things kind of really fast in your face sort of mm -hmm. sort of mm -hmm. tunes as well right yeah those ones are just like you know just 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 hitting you in the face hitting you over the head and just like tunic's goal has always sort of just been to punish Okay. Uh, to punish the listener, so that, as long as we're doing that, then I'm then I'm okay with it. Right. Then you're you. Yeah. That's 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 a good, it's a good goal to have, I guess. Right. <laughs> I think it will change. Like we have a we have another record in the can right now, so I'm actually writing record three right now. So I think record three will be a little bit different, but uh, but you know, still with that that tunic flavor though, right? The uh, yeah, of, yeah. Of course. Yeah. You know, I, mean, I guess whatever I write is tunic. I was just you know, I guess. So. Yeah. Has has this um you know, lockdown time, has, has it been productive for you as a writer? Have you had, because uh, because it, it seems to go either way. People are either, you know, super, super productive and they're writing like album after album of, I mean, they have like six albums backed up yeah, or Romano they just, or something like that, right? Right, or, or they just can't. And there's a lot of people who have just found they've had all this time and then nothing, nothing comes out. So have you, are you on one of those extremes or what's it been like? For yeah, you? I've done a little bit of everything. I, uh, I wrote like probably an album's worth of material in the first lockdown in the okay. first wave um just like i have all these videos of me sitting at my kitchen table being like and then i do this like talking to myself <laughs> as i play the riff and then once we could practice again i took it to the band and none of it really stuck and then there was like and then i wrote a bunch during the second wave and a bunch of that stuff stuck and now um there's even some stuff now on this impending third wave, or we may be in the third wave by the time this comes out. Totally, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, that I'm been writing, but I also took like a break, and I also uh, tried. I tried some writing exercises. I I tried to write um, about five or six songs without using guitar, where I just played with like just bass and keyboards and stuff like oh, that. Cool. And then I also got really into 
uh, samplers. I bought two different samplers where I have like this little SP404, which is just like a little guy. It's like this big. And then I bought that that drum sampler that everyone has. So I'm yeah, yeah. just trying to uh, be more versatile. I never really um, thought of myself as a good musician up until, I don't know, probably the last year or like, or like confident or right. capable. So this is really like, I've sort of come into my own in the last like probably two or three months where I've actually like feel okay <laughs> at what I do. Do you feel like any of those, uh, you know, experiments with with samplers and things like that, are those going to fit into this music that you're doing with the band or is that potentially going to be something different? Uh, a little bit of both. I, uh, I do have, um, I am working on like some solo material that is, uh, not not tunic but obviously tunic is like is number one it's just i just figured like i love music so i might as well yeah. write it and uh i was I, I got ahead i got ahead of myself with all the tunic material and i was just like also i spent so much time writing by muscle memory that i wanted to just be like it's always been tunic for like the last like eight years so i'm just mm -hmm. like let's can i write something else so it's kind of just like been experiments doing that so some of it will be on tunic records actually the first five things i wrote i sent to a couple buddies and i was like this is like what do you think about this is like a solo stuff and they were just like this sounds like tunic and i was like okay <laughs> and i was like okay cool well i guess i wrote a tunic song instead today like so why well, is that is that because do you think it's because it's stylistically like tunic or just because you sound like tunic because you're on all the tunic records and making making those you know noises I, with your guitar and mouth and everything else yeah i think it's i think it's just like I thought it sounded different enough because I was like, I'm using a keyboard instead of a guitar. <laughs> and they're like, no, this just sounds like something that you would write on guitar. And I was just yeah. like, oh, okay. <laughs> so <laughs> so it's it's cool. Like it has like a different feel to it and it's a little bit different, but it's it's uh, but it's still tunic. So. Okay, okay. What has this been like? Uh, Cause I know you guys tour pretty heavily and uh, this has got to be weird to, to have this much time off without being able to hit the road at all really, right? So what has it been like as, as a band you know, not having that opportunity to go out and see audiences and, and meet people face to face. Uh, it's been brutal. Um, it's, we, we got our work visas approved uh, like March 15th or something, you know, like right when like they're like in 2020 where it's like yeah. the pandemic is called, it's like, choose your US work visa. And I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> right on. Um, so it's, it, it's, it's been really brutal. It's, uh, it's, like this, all this stuff would have come out a year early. Like we just pumped the brakes for like a whole 12 months, which is something that I've never, ever done in this band. Yeah. Um, it's always been go, go, go. So it's kind of been, I sort of explained that it's like a blessing and a curse to have the time to like, not just react all the time, but to actually plan and, and sort of figure out what we want to do and not so, and I have time to write. I was just saying earlier today that like, well, I wrote these great new songs, but we're going on tour for six weeks and uh, we just have to play the songs at practice. We don't have time to write new songs or something right. like that. So, but like touring is, is the best. And I know that Dan and I miss it. Rory, um, our bass player is in university full time. So we would have had to bring someone else uh, with us uh, to play bass, but it would have also been nice to bring up like our friend Cody from Texas has played with us before. So oh, cool. Um, that's obviously not happening, even if there were shows now yeah. because of the yeah right the border stuff yeah. So yeah. it's just, it's just like yeah it's just the worst it's like it's what I've uh, dedicated my whole life to my whole adult life to that's something yeah. that I, uh, not totally a lot of people haven't really understood when I uh, am having that conversation where they're like how's it going I'm like everything I've ever worked for in my entire life is on hold and I'm not just like because of tunic but also because of like owning the goodwill and stuff like right that. right you know, yeah like, yeah it's just like well there it goes like <laughs> not to say if the goodwill is closing or anything we'll, we'll be fine but i just mean like but you know the shows aren't happening yeah yeah no my, my entire livelihood was just like totally uh, upended so yeah and i think that's different than a lot of people even people in bands because a lot of people in bands they have a day job that's not connected to the music business right and so yeah. they they can still they're still working from home. They still are bringing in money. They're still doing something, even though they can't tour or can't play at a bar or whatever. Right. But yeah, you have mm -hmm. on both ends, uh, the, the fun stuff and the work stuff and it all, it's all combined. Right. So yeah. 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 
yeah, I, I just, I really uh, pulled my resources. I put all my eggs in one basket here and it, it's not working out. <laughs> yeah. Well, hopefully, hopefully it, it changes soon. Yeah. It's assuming the, the pandemic ended tomorrow. I mean, it's not going to, but what would be the first thing that, that your band would do? Like, would you want to immediately get on tour or what would be the plan? We'd practice. Yeah. I would just practice. We'd spend so long. Like I have 17 songs in a Dropbox file. Oh, well. That I've just been like, here you go here you go. Here's another one. You know, like, it just feel like, what do you want to work on first? Like, you know, I would, I would just want to write. I would just want, we got to do that. Um, we had one practice before we did that Manitoba music. Uh, we did a, a live thing for new Colossus that right, right. Manitoba music, uh, let us shoot at the park theater there. And it was just like, just being in the same room with people with like our amps blaring and stuff like that. I was just like, this rocks. And we were also like, this is really hard. <laughs> I can't believe we used to do this every day. <laughs> yeah. So do you think there'll be like a, a, almost a learning curve when, when people start coming back to this, like for bands as well as audiences? Cause the idea of going to a show, I'd love to see a show like tomorrow, but I feel uncomfortable about it a little bit, you know, just, just oh, yeah. because it, it's been a year it's been, you know, and the last show I went to was the, um, when the park theater kind of reopened, Right. You know, after the first lockdown, it was the Scott Nolan show. It was the first one they did. And it was great. It was a great show. It was very intimate, but everyone was spaced out. And it was, I enjoyed myself and I, I, I was so glad to do it, but it was so weird. Like it just, it felt so strange. And um, yeah, so I, I think there might be some uh, trepidation on the part of everyone just getting back to shows. And it, I don't know. Absolutely. No, that's, um, uh, I even feel that way. And like, you know, shows are my, are my livelihood. Yeah. Both, both senses. Like I, uh, the first show that I did was a Julian's daughter show in that same time frame that you were talking about, um, where things could happen again. And I had it at the Goodwill there. And I remember just standing at the back of the at the bar and seeing the show happen and being like, this just makes me really uncomfortable. <laughs> like yeah. I was like, I don't feel good about this. Like I like I just had a real comp like in, like I like you know, hypothetically we're all gonna be fine, but it just like I got to do those um those shows on the top of the wag like the, okay. the yep. kids show and the jaywood I, I presented those and uh through the goodwill and those are great because it was outside and it was you know just just felt a little better yeah i think that everybody i think there'll be a huge learning curve and i think that i honestly think i hope i'm wrong but i think that we will see 50 percent turnout for everything moving forward for the next little while yeah so like any show that would be 200 people will be 100 people like, I just think that we will lose half of the people going. I could see that for sure. I don't, I don't think that's a stretch either because just there's so much paranoia and uncertainty and, you know, lack of information about what's going on that everyone's, you know, a little bit. Uh, <laughs> a little I, I, want, I want to be wrong, but. Yeah, I, yeah of course. Yeah. Yeah. But. Well, what, what, I mean, this is hypothetical, obviously, but what do you do? You know, I'm thinking more from the musician side of things than from the sure. venue side of things, but, you know, assuming that, touring can't happen the way it used to happen maybe I, I don't know what would happen but maybe things have changed so much that you can't be doing as many as many dates as you would have done because of pandemic restrictions what what do you do then like would you, do you think you'd have to find a way to uh make up that time doing something else uh as a band absolutely, absolutely. Well, as a band yeah i guess like i mean i know it's a kind of a hard to answer question but yeah. I, I just i have all these doom scenarios in my head totally. you know as to what might happen uh after things get back to normal quote unquote and i don't know i i just i have a hard time imagining things to go back to how they were even two years ago yeah and like and especially since tunic's like built off of touring yeah so like i guess i would just work i don't know <laughs> <laughs> like i guess we would just like do what I was actually thinking about this sort of earlier today. I was like, would I be okay touring like 60 days the, of the year? Right. I was like, would I be okay to do like one month in Europe and one month in the States? And that would be it. Like, like someone like, like Ken Mode or something like that. Like, you know, yeah, yeah. And I was just like, yeah, but Ken Mode's like 40. And I was like, I don't want to be like, I'm, I can still do like, you know, so, <laughs> like, I can still do a hundred days. Um, but yeah, like, I guess if that would just be the case, I guess I would just make those shows the best we could. And I, I, I would push it, to be honest, I would push it as far as I could. Yeah. Even if it's like, you can't, you can't be out of the country for, you know, this long. I just like, okay, well, we're driving straight back and I'm going right back down. <laughs> like, you know, if there's some weird, weird restriction. You find a loophole. Yeah. 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 I just push yeah. it to the limit. 
does does tunic um thrive on on live energy i mean i feel like ken mode's a great example of a band that is just mm. unbelievable live and they're great on record too like i mean i you know i i love their albums but they definitely feed off the audience for sure and i mean you know you're playing a similarly uh, abrasive style of music and i mean i think there's probably a lot of similar influences in there between the two bands are mm. you the same way in the sense that uh you know being in a maybe a smaller intimate venue with a, with a, a big boisterous crowd really uh, helps kind of project what it is you're doing as a band. Yeah, sure. Unless people like start like moshing or pushing or anything like that. Like I don't really put up with any of that crap. Yeah. Uh, I just like, like a bunch of dudes taking up space at the front, like get the hell out of there. Like, um, yeah, it doesn't really, it, it really sort of depends. I, I wish I could, Sam, I could say that it's audience based, but it's really dependent on how we're, how we're all doing. Sure. And like we will play the best show if there's like you know we'll play the best show possible if there's 10 people there if there's a thousand people there like it just really all depends on how where how our sleep was last night or how long sure. the drive how long the drive was um and it's also just like we sort of just become like a like a well-oiled machine at this point where like dan and i have this joke where we look at each other on stage right before we start playing and we look at each other and we go this again huh <laughs> And, you know, and then like, and then they count us in and it's just like, and you just do it. Like, it's just, you just go to work, you know, you just go yeah. to work and you bang it out. And it's, and it's, uh, we're so lucky to be able to do it. And uh, so if there's people there, that's great. If there's people not there, like, whatever. You're going to do it anyway. Yeah. yeah. We're going to do it. We're there anyways. We're there. Yeah. To, we're, we're there to work. And I don't care if five people pay $10 or a hundred people pay $10. Someone paid there to see us play and it's our job to, to do it. Cool. As for the record, that's um, the, the compilation record. Where can people find that? What's the best way to obtain a copy of that? Exhaling, you can get through tunicband.bank. Yeah, tunicband.bankcamp.com. Okay. Uh, or via or via Artifact Records, uh, which is artifact.com, but artifact is a pun. It's yes, art, art of fact, art, right? Art of fact, yes. Yeah, yeah. And then, um, and you can get it at any any local store anywhere. Um, either I think. McNally Robinson will have it. Okay. And you can, but you, we have distro all around the world. So you go to any local record store you want and tell them you want the, you want exhaling by tunic and they'll, they'll get it for you. Assuming your record store is open. <laughs> We're not yes, in like exactly. the fourth wave or something. Yeah, 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 yeah. Cool. And then I guess the website uh, is probably the best way to find out more information about upcoming shows and things like that. Yeah. Tunicband.com. We, we do everything on there and every, everything is tunic band. You want to hear me uh, gripe about my personal life? That's mostly Twitter, uh, <laughs> but anything. But Instagram and Facebook is all banned stuff. Cool. Well, yeah, I hope I hope that things change and you can get back to your hectic touring schedule and and you Thanks. know uh, think things get back to some kind of normality. But it's it's cool that like I said at the beginning, you you've managed to to get the word out, I guess, about about just old stuff and new stuff in a way that's, uh, you know, managed to um, avoid some of the pitfalls, I guess, of, of being during a pandemic. So, uh, I mean, it, I noticed it and hopefully other people have too. Thanks. Yeah. I worked really hard on it. So I really appreciate that. That means a lot to me. Right on.